So let's explore some of the chemistry of C60 Buckminster Fullerene. So C60, it's got this football-shaped uh, structure, and just like a normal soccer ball, it's got pentagons and hexagons. Uh, you can see them side by side here. You can see the black pentagon patches here on the football and the corresponding red pentagons on the molecular model uh, to the side there. Um, each atom is actually surrounded by three atoms. Um, but carbon has a valency of four. It wants to have four bonds. So how do we sort out this structure of the bonding when you only have three neighbours, but you actually want a valency of four, four bonds? And in C60, in the Buckminster Fullerene structure, there's a beautiful, elegant solution to that problem. Um, what happens is that some of the bonds are double bonds. So in the molecular model, all the red bonds that you see here are single bonds, and all the white ones are double bonds. And it's not obvious, but actually it doesn't matter which atom you pick on this structure because of the symmetry, because it has such a beautiful round shape. Uh, it's the same all over the molecule, so you can pick any atom you want. So this is showing the same thing uh, in a drawing. You can see the double bonds here uh, between, the pentagon, uh, between the hexagons, between two hexagons, and the single bonds in the pentagons. Um, the way you make C60 um, is where you get two carbon rods and you just touch them and you pass electrical current through the carbon rods. Uh, if you put enough current and power through the carbon, it will heat up. There'll be a spark generated between the two. That temperature of that arc is two to 3,000 degrees and the carbon vaporizes. Now you don't do this in air because it will just burn the carbon to form carbon dioxide. But if you strike this arc in helium, so in a gas that will take the energy away from the arc, but it won't actually physically react with the carbon. What you get when you strike the arc is the whole of the inside of the container being coated in a light, fluffy carbon material. So what you do is you have a glass bell jar, for example, here. You set up the carbon rods in the apparatus. You, uh, with apparatus underneath, you uh, pass an electrical current through the carbon when this is full of helium. And when you do that, you get a black, black fluffy material, a sort of soot-like material. And 5 to 10% of that soot is C60 and the other fullerenes. So essentially, it's very easy to make C60. The buckyballs and the C60 and the fullerenes are dissolvable in solvents such as benzene or toluene. So you simply get the soot, shake it up in some solvent and filter it, and you can extract the, uh, the um, C60 from it. And then you can take this, you've got a coloured solution, which is quite red coloured. You put it on what's called a chromatography column which is a column of material which is slightly absorptive to these molecules. And it turns out that the molecules absorb and desorb on this column at different rates. So the buckyballs go through first, the C70 are slightly slower to go through the column, and the bigger cage is even slower. So by putting the red extracted material from the soot on the top of one of these columns, it's called a chromatography column, and flushing it with pure solvent, you can actually start to separate out the solvents, uh, separate out the fullerenes in terms of their mass and their shape. What comes out first from the column is C60, which is a beautiful magenta colour when it's dissolved in, in toluene, for example. And this comes out, and uh, of course then you can evaporate that and get crystals, and you've got pure C60. And then later on you get a red colour coming through, which is C70, which is like a rugby ball. And actually if you keep on going through, you can get other size, uh, other size fullerenes from that. So C60 is, is quite an interesting molecule. It's got these single and double bonds, and you can break the double bonds and do chemistry. But it actually, it's even more interesting than that. You can trap atoms inside the cage here. These are called endohedral fullerenes. And really, it's a whole new type of bonding or structure where an atom is trapped inside the buckyball. You can break the double, double bond and add uh, atoms to the cage. And also, you can take out a carbon atom, put a different atom in, like nitrogen, for example. So you can have C59 nitrogen. And so there's a very interesting, rich, rewarding chemistry of C60. So if we go back to this picture of C60 with its single and double bonds, these double bonds uh, are reactive. Um, the first interesting uh, reaction is that C60 will actually react with oxygen. If you have a solution of C60 in toluene, for example, and you leave it on the shelf, if there's a little bit of oxygen dissolved in that liquid, it starts forming C60O. So now you've got carbon monoxide, you've got carbon dioxide, and you've got C60O as, a carbon, uh, as an oxide of carbon. The oxygen goes on one of these double bonds. You can see on the model here, this red thing is the oxygen atom on C60. Um, you can also react with fluorine. You end up with these beautiful models. So you've got the basic C60 model, um, model here you can see, and the white things are 20 fluorine atoms. One of the most interesting, from my point of view, is the bromine reaction. So if you dissolve up C60 in toluene, and you dissolve up bromine in toluene, and add the two together, you get a reaction. And what I love about this molecule, if I show you the, uh, the molecule here in close-up, 
Um, when the theoreticians looked at what would happen when you reacted C60 with bromine, they said, oh yes, we predict that it's going to react and it's going to produce this. But when the chemists actually did the experiment, they found it produced something else. So what I love about this, not, it's not that I'm taking the mickey out of the theoreticians at all. What's happening is that the theoreticians predicted that it would react, but they gave the wrong answer. And the chemists then went along and did the experiments and found it gave something else. And that forced the theoreticians to look back at their calculations and recalculate it. So the buckyball chemistry is not only advancing the chemistry, of course, by doing the experiments, but it's also uh, advancing computational chemistry because the buckyball always does something interesting that you don't expect. Presumably, as the first bromine goes on the ball, it changes the chemistry subtly, so that when the other bromines go on, it doesn't form what the simple calculations predicted. It forms something else. So I love that, that this whole thing is stimulating not only the experimental side, but also the theoretical side. So that's C60 bromine 6. Um, if you want more information on the chemistry of C60, do check out my website.